In this video, I'll be walking you through the features and the settings of using our Works 2.0 Audio Spatializer. The session that I have here is one that you can download online. It's our sample session. And we'll first want to start by importing a video. And if you see the videos are located in your sample session, in your Pro Tools sample session folder hierarchy under the video files folder. And there's two different versions, the high res and the low res. You'll want to work with the low res version while working within Pro Tools for processing purposes. Because if you had the high res in there, your processor most likely wouldn't be able to handle it. So to the left, we have the track list section. The track list section basically has all your tracks. Every single slave that you have in your session will be reflected here on your track list. These tracks will have the same name as the tracks that you have in your session in Pro Tools. If you change the name of the track in Pro Tools, you'll also change the name of the track in the track list section here. Now you can select each track and you could move it along to wherever you'd like. And notice that when I select each track, my controllers down here change. So each of these has their own individual controls. And in this section, we have our video. Let me go ahead and press play. This is the equirectangular view of the video. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a 360 video laid out, unfolded in a two-dimensional version. So if you go into HMD view, this is what you would see if you were wearing a head-mounted display. You can look around by right-clicking. You can also do the same in any view. Simply right click and drag and your view changes. You can go back to HMD view by pressing here or you can go back into the panoramic view by pressing here again. The label just turns on the label of the tracks. The grid turns the grid on and off. And to my right here, we have the map section. The map section works similar to the video section. You would right click and your view changes up, down, any way you'd like. From this very section, you can also move your objects. You can select and your objects will move. In this case, it's my ambisonics object. We'll put this back in the middle. Yeah, so if it's easier to move your objects from here, you can do that as well. What you can also do with the map section is change the view of the map so you could see the elevation of the objects that you have within your scene. You can also select multiple objects and move them as a group. These controls are your head orientation controls and they do the same as if you were right clicking right on the map view section itself. And you can revert them back to zero by holding Alt and clicking. On the bottom right corner, we have our monitoring format. We have GA5, which is our format, and FOA. Let me explain a little bit about GA5. GA5 is our own proprietary format. It incorporates ambisonic signals, object signals, and channel-based signals. We don't downmix your stems. So if you have 20 slaves in your session, 
Those 20 slaves will be processed individually on the player side using our player. You can e either use GPlayer, which is our reference player, or if you have an app, you can embed our sole SDK within that player. What our particular format does is it provides a more accurate representation of your work from production to the consumer because of the fact that we don't downmix to any specific channel numbers. We process each and every sound individually. So you may have up to 20 tracks in the final output. What that also does is allow for better localization and better audio quality. When I say better localization, I mean that you're better able to tell exactly where a sound is coming from. Those are some of the benefits that our format offers over FOA, First Order Ambisonics. Now, First Order Ambisonics is the spherical audio format that I've been speaking about. It's quite popular in 360 video and virtual reality. And you can upload it to YouTube, you can upload it to Facebook, but it won't have the same audio precision as our format. So yes, you can choose what format you're monitoring here, whether it be ours or first order ambisonics. Now keep in mind, this has no bearing on the final output. On the bottom here is our spatial positioning section. This is basically where you're gonna be controlling the spatialization of each of your objects. Now it's a lot more intuitive actually to control directly from here directly from the video section. This can be used anytime that, you know, you have something linear. And again, by pressing Alt and clicking, you'll go back to the original position. And we have azimuth, which is basically just your lateral movements. We have elevation and we have distance. So the way that it'll typically work is you'll click and drag and your automation data will be written into Pro Tools once you've enabled the automation data on the slave plugins. So once your automation azimuth and elevation data is written, you'll go back and adjust for your distance. And this right here is of course the volume fader. Since as I mentioned earlier, the volume faders in Pro Tools won't be reflected in your final mix, you could adjust volume here. And this can also be automated. And again, you can set it back to zero by holding Alt and clicking. This specific section here just tells you the type of track. In this case, I have the Ambisonics track selected. It's a quad track. You can choose the color here, whatever you'd like, and then lock positioning. This will ensure that you don't accidentally change any type of positioning after you've already been happy with the spatial positioning that you've set. Now our object tracks will have a few more features to choose from. Bypasses spatial rendering completely. You don't have any binaural rendering or any HRTFs included into this. It's great for things like background music and voiceovers. Keep in mind that if you have this selected, everything will be non-interactive, meaning it will be locked to the user's head. This is our timbre preservation option. What this option will allow you to do is bypass binaural rendering, but at the same time, the sound will be interactive. So if you turn your head, it'll remain where it should be. Interactive, non-head locked. This is good for certain times when you hear some kind of phasing issues or some sounds don't sound as good as you'd like them to. You can turn this on and off. Keep in mind though, that if this is on, 
the spatialization effects drastically decrease because part of spatializing sounds is binaurally rendering them. So you'll want to be careful with this. It can be a great tool and it could not. Moving on to settings. This is our global preferences section. And here will be the reference video that you'll be using. You can either click to import in the beginning of the session or you can import it here. This is your video start point to sync any video with your audio. You can change the start point to whatever you'd like. This is your stereoscopic type. You'll be able to select it here. Video brightness, you can turn the brightness of the video up and down. Display marker only when audio signal is active does exactly what it says, meaning if you have a bunch of audio signals, you'll only be able to see them when the audio source is being played in Pro Tools. Now, when you pause it, all of your audio signals will come back. And this is our 3D map section. Uh, your field of view, this will be the field of view that you'll be seeing through each one of these headsets. Now, since each headset has a different viewing field, you can select which headset you'll be using here. In our case, we'll be using the Gear VR. The distance meter, you can choose whether it's on or off. And your units of measure, you can choose between feet and meters. Now for our export settings, you can choose to export just the spatial audio file or the video with the audio file here. You can choose between our format, G Audio, which I've already explained um, how our format works, and then First Order Ambisonics. You can choose your audio codec here, 44.1 or 48. Whatever your session is, that's what you should choose. Output file name, exactly what it says, the name of your outputted file, type it in there. Your destination, you'll choose wherever you want your file to go. And then here for the video configuration section where it says 360 video file for muxing, this is where you'll choose the original high res video, wherever that may be. And then here you'll choose your video format. And one minor thing I forgot to mention, if you click this right here of each of these tracks, you'll be able to visualize or hide the marker for each specific track.